Welcome, everyone, back to Tuesday Night Luke Live Online. I'm Father James DeLucio, back in New York City in the library of the Rectory of the Paulist Fathers. Tonight's pericope is Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 10, two of the most famous parables that Jesus gave us leading up to next week, perhaps the most famous parable, but I'll let you guess what that might be. So here we are, Luke 15, 1 through 10. Now, tax collectors and sinners were drawing near to Jesus to listen to him, but the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, this man welcomes sinners and tax collectors and eats with them. So to them, Jesus addressed this parable. Who among you, having 100 sheep, yet losing one of them, would not leave the 99 in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, Will he not set it on his shoulders with great joy? And upon his arrival home, will he not call together his friends and neighbors and say to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents rather than over 99 righteous people who have no need for repentance. Or what woman, having 10 coins but losing one of them, would not light a lamp and sweep, searching carefully for the lost coin? until she finds it. And when she does find it, will she not call together her friends and neighbors and say to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I have lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be more rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Two of the most joyful parables, reminding us that now how reminding us that no matter how lost we may feel or how we go astray, the hound of God, God keeps sending the Holy Spirit out to find us, to find us, to find us, and say, Hey, I'm with you. Come back and let's continue this relationship. There's nothing that separates you from me. To quote St. Paul to the Romans, nothing separates us from the love of Christ. It's so important in our understanding and talking about God to everybody, not only to fellow Christians, but to people of any other faith, that ours is a God that revealed to us by Jesus of tremendous, tremendous patience, and mercy who does seek us out to bring us that sense of calm and peace that comes from belonging, a deep sense that we belong. And if we don't feel it with others, God usually sends people in our lives to give us a sense of belonging. But if we don't, we always have the Lord. We always have God to say, you belong to me and to allow ourselves to make that the foundation of our lives. I looked in the Paulist biblical commentary for some new ideas on these parables. And the first, in terms of the lost sheep, it tells us that typically shepherds never worked alone. There was never one shepherd for a group of a hundred sheep or however many. There usually were two or three. So naturally, then, there would always be one who goes off uh, to find the lost sheep. And that uh, usually it was extended families who owned um, a group or a herd of sheep. Herd of sheep? I don't know. I have to look that up. H-E-R-D. Hmm. So uh, that everyone in the community really would, the friends and neighbors would, uh, the relatives and neighbors would definitely be rejoicing that one of the sheep 
has been found. Jesus's parable brings a higher sense that one person is in charge and that makes it even more emphatic. Uh, but that sense that everyone has an investment in the group, which is so true, of course, of our Christian faith and our sense of communion, um, is very emphatic, very beautiful. In terms of the woman, the commentary says that uh, most things were bartered and traded in that time. So it really, they don't have the same sense of coins that we do. Our coins are going to buy something, but rather that women uh, kept the coins uh, in particular um, for jewelry, making things out of the coins. Again, we have a wonderful sense of a feminine um, uh, image of God. Uh, and it's it, Luke does this often. He gives us a masculine event and a feminine event in terms of the healings, Jesus' encounters, and here with the um, images of the masculine and feminine dynamics of God, knowing, of course, that God is beyond gender, but that we can use and must use both aspects because it takes both male and female to give a fuller picture of what it means to be human. And so, again, because this is something that um, women desired uh, and it, this adornment, um, it's sort of an extravagance and a great a deprivation to have lost one of the coins because it couldn't, com uh, it couldn't complete um, the necklace uh, that the women would enjoy wearing. And again, that would um, bring them some uh, compliment and... Uh, admir not only admiration, but uh, 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 observance, attention would be paid. And that attention, um, God invites us to pay attention to everyone, male and female. So there we have these joyous parables. It's wonderful to return to you with something so joyful as these. I hope you continue to ponder them and discuss them and keep a nice balance between the male and females in your family and among your friends and the male and female dynamics within each person the anima the animus and here we go have a great week everybody thanks for tuning in god bless